So glad to have you join us on another very great time out on The Big Question, live on Idoma Television. On today's edition of the program, we caught up recently with um, a man, the father of Miss Sahara Henson, who used to be known as Mr. Clifford Oche. It would interest you to know that Mr. Clifford Oche or Miss Sahara Henson, as she is recognized at the moment, is a native of Otukonobi, uh, a community in Otuko local government area of Benner State. And presently, he's been in the media for some time, actually. Lots of people got to know about him and they started talking about him after he decided to swap or to change his sex from being male into female. Interesting, you would say. And recently, we caught up with his father and for the very first time, he decided to open up on a whole lot of things that I'm so sure you would be interested to know about. So come with me as we meet Chief, he's a chief actually, Chief Oche Ela, who spoke so much about his son and now his daughter. Talking right now with uh, the father. Oh, I've just been able to find out that officially his name is Ochela. Popularly known as Clifford Ochela, but he has said he's Ochela. So you're going to introduce yourself to us and then we'll get straight into it. Arboela. Some people call me Chief Arboela. Um, according to what we heard before now, which you have just countered, um, well, we heard that you said that you, you, you disowned him at a point. Is that true? Exactly. I have never disowned him at any time. Never at any time. He's my son. He did it today. And uh, that was why I was very mad with the publication. Not only that, they misquoted me, they never asked me, they never interviewed me. None of them. Yeah, they, Publisher right. interviewed him at any point. Yeah. And they stated there that the family said so, so, so. And uh, I'm the legal father, wherever he goes. Now that he has changed himself to uh, what he is now, and whatever name he gives for himself, this is all well. Especially on the, see the last level or so, um, before she facilitated her going to London. So, the case, the issue of where I'm worried and worried and very mad about is the what I really said and the people attributed it to me. Well, that is what. So you did not at any point At any point, yourself. I did not speak to the press. I can talk to you. You did never not. asked me. Okay, and, uh, sir. Since you did not disown him, if he decides to come back home today, yeah. would you accept him? Yeah. Uh, well, the mother left them with me. I had a picture of him and the sister. So I came to the village, they were feeling sleepy. I put a mark on the floor under the thing where we were checking. And um, I, whenever I see that picture, I remember it. And I think about it seriously. So the woman, um, she had her way. She came here to stay there. Okay, so you but, talked about not being able to reach you. Have you made personal efforts to reach out to me as your child. I've been trying to talk about it. Uh, Judith. 
Would you also consider him also as being one of the gifts? Yes. As being one of the gifts compared to Yes. Us. More so that he thought of becoming a woman. Eh? That is something I never imagined. But as it has happened, my heart is guarded. It is his own decision to go that way. In uh, in the developed countries, women and women get married. It's, it's, it's not accord, that is not, a, that is not in accordance with our tradition in the Dhamma, right? But no law bans you not to do that. Well, it's not but in this Nigeria, case, yes. but in this case, there's a law actually that prohibits men and a man getting married. It's upset, not off. In Nigeria, at the moment. That's why I'm talking this way. <laughs> but when it is passed into law, it becomes the law, right? But at the time, but right now it's actually at, at prohibited. Wait, wait. Reporting, yes. But at the time, <laughs> at the time, this change came up. When he decided to do that. Not from my knowledge. I don't know whether it is true. Like I said, I have no regret. This is my This is concerning. The, the, the father is alone. I'm next to the mother. He's living with me. He's a student. But this is my own love. I married the senior sister. Now that. This is so a child. No, a I told you my first child is a research agent in, in the forest or where so we, we do it. Yes. Even now we can't talk, but whenever it comes to the TV, we talk. Okay, so you've not been in touch with your check for this long since. I don't have his phone number. I don't have his phone number. He is now my daughter. He was my my son before, but now he is my daughter. He is your daughter, yeah. and you're accepting all that. Very much. No, okay, so being a daughter, he's entitled to a husband. Yeah. So if he decides to marry a husband, now how would well, you react to that? If he decides to have a husband, and he's not going to pay the That price. decision, wait, that decision is not to him and the person marrying him. If they feel they can live together peacefully as long as I want. So let it be. So you would accept the price? Why not? Why not? I will. I'm not committed any, any crime. Ooh, and that was such a great and interesting moment. Speaking with the father of um, Mr. Should I say Mr. Sahara? Mr. Sahara Hansen, Chief Agboela. He spoke so much for the very first time. He decided to spill out such information. And you know, for me, the heights, the crux of that interview for me was the point where he said that um, he would actually receive the bride price for any man who's interested in marrying his son or his daughter, <laughs> so to say. So when she finally finds a husband, she would bring him home and we would be glad to come over and he would gladly 